All right, I had a hard time finding a video to help me work on my 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee, so this is my contribution to the Jeep world. I've got a 99 Grand Cherokee with a 45 RFE transmission, and I'm changing out the solenoid pack that is above this valve body here. So this is what it looks like after you're getting after you get your transmission pan off. I loosened each screw a little bit until they, I found you know first place it started leaking out. Had a big catch pan for it. You're gonna need something big. This is one of those AutoZone free ones that they give you with an oil change. That barely fit all of it. Got my Jeep raised up a little bit from the front. This is looking towards the back. And so it was pretty clean, as long as you let it go slowly. So I got the pan out, here's what it looks like inside. You've got your valve body here, and your two filters. And to get this out, I'm gonna have to get the valve body out, obviously, to replace the part. So I've already pre-loosened this here. It was a pain in the butt to get out. But I'm pretty sure all these bolts are T25. And I've got some instructions to help me know which ones to take out to get the valve body off. But I'm going to remove my filter so I can get to it. So that's got some fluid in it as well, so you got to make sure you get that out more carefully than I just did. It's always recommended you change both filters whenever you're doing something like this, whether you're going in to replace your part or just a filter change. So there you go, there's your valve body. There's your filter, other filter that you have to get out. Best way to do that. It's one of these babies. I've got all the bolts out, except for just a couple that I have loosened up. Now, before you remove the valve body, make sure on the driver's side part of your Jeep, you get in and remove your plug, your 23 pin plug. To get this plug out, this little thing that was up, you just pull it down. up, out it comes, you're ready to get out your valve body. Alright, the bolts to get your valve body off are not T25s, a lot of these here are, just see throughout here, but you're only worried about five screws. They are right here, two, three, four, five, I lied, six. There's your six bolts. You got, and they're they're uh, five sixteenths, just like the same size as the ones you used to get the pan off. All right, I've got my last few bolts here to get out. Got these three. Once you get them loosened with the bit, they're pretty easy to crank out. Slowly drop your valve body. You can see your, if you can see it, the 23 pin connector right there. This is my filter. I'm going to wait to take it out when I finish replacing when I'm, you know, when I'm ready to put it back in. Everything back in, but there's that. And there is your valve body with your solenoid pack right there. That's the problem for me. All right, I've got my valve body in here now, and I've got to get the solenoid pack off. So to do that, you go to the bottom here, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think fifteen bolts. Once you get these six, it's all the ones that are in the middle, all with a T25. Preferably you got something better than this because this thing's a pain in the butt. Alright, I've got my bolts out. In a, they're kind of in a square fashion if you can see from this at all. This is what I'm going off of. It's a manual found out, I found online. That's the little diagram of your bolts you take out. 
This thing leaks a lot during this whole process, so just be careful with that. And there's my old TRS assembly solenoid pack that wouldn't work right when I first started it up. This is for when you're having transmission problems that are causing your trying to go into limp mode. Mine was throwing the P171 code, which led to uh, the pressure switch, whatever it is. I did all the research, narrowed it down to the solenoid pack. Now the one that I got to replace it is just the refurbished one that I found for 200. They've come out with upgrades for this part, and the newest one is between three and four hundred dollars, and it's got the white cable. That's also, I think, used with the 545 RFE transmission. And I think if you do that, you have to get an adapter plate or something. I don't know. I didn't research it enough. I just figured I'm doing this myself, obviously, because I'm on a budget, so I didn't go buy a brand new one. I figured I'll get a refurbished one with a year warranty and see how it goes. Now that you have your old solenoid off, I'm going to put on my new one, or well, my refurbished one. The only thing I didn't like that makes me a little bit nervous is on my old one, these five pins here go up and down really easily but they didn't on my replacement one two of them did these guys are kind of rusty and this one if I push it in it doesn't want to come out and I had to use a safety or a paper clip to push it back down and these run along uh, the TRS selector plate and I guess there might be little sensors that help the car to you know, know which gear it's in um, because when I was putting it on I'm going to make sure again that the selector plate is in the park position this slides back and forth the first gear is all the way this way I'll put your plate on Make sure that it's aligned with the two dowels right here. Make sure that this part goes inside the selector plate. You got your fit. And when you, when you put some pressure on it, it pushes those little pins in. So I'm only hoping that that last one that wouldn't go up and down really easily eventually gets that way with the heat and the transmission fluid, whatever it takes but that might be worth checking on your replacement solenoid pack if that's going to be a problem or not. I guess I'll just have to see. Once you get the pack on, you're just going to reverse your steps and get all your screws back on. I've got the solenoid pack mounted back onto the valve body with all 15 screws. Make sure when you're tightening them up, the ones next to the arrows are tightened up first. They need to be tightened to uh, 50 inch pounds as well as all the other screws afterwards. I just went through and tightened them a little bit at a time crossways until you get to 50 inch pounds. And it's ready to put back on. So you're simply just reversing your steps. One thing to make sure of though is that you are realigning the uh, manual shift lever with the uh, TRS plate. It's this right here. You just need to make sure that is lined up with this. The TRS selector plate that you had in park. Which might not be the easiest thing. Let's see how it goes. As long as they're both in park, there's really no reason they shouldn't be lined up. There you go. Place a few bolts to hold it, and then you're going to screw them back on alternate, alternately across from each other. 
I also lubricated the seal on um, the solenoid pack connector that connects to the plug on the outside. I lubricated that with petroleum jelly. And you're going to tighten these up to 105 inch pounds. It's a bigger bolt so it can handle being a little bit tighter. Lucky for me, I got to do this in March when it was had just warmed up and then it decided to snow today, so I got my gloves on. Remember, you've got six bolts to mount back in, so don't forget any. Check the seals on the valve body and solenoid pack as well. Replace any if they're cracked or busted. Mine seemed fine. Tighten it up. As long as your TRS plate was in the park position like it should have been all along and your car is still in the park position, then you shouldn't have a problem realigning that manual connector thing. If you d if you don't know how to don't know how tight to make them, if you don't have a tool to get the exact inch pounds. I was talking to the guy at AutoZone, he said just you can't over tighten it unless you're over tightening so much that you're risking breaking the bolts. That's why smaller bolts have smaller inch pound tightening ranges. Alternately, evenly. Now that that's done, I'm going to resume my transmission fluid change before I get to taking this filter out. Um, I'm going to clean my pan and scrape off whatever residues left from the previous gasket before I make my gasket. Well, my phone died, so I wasn't able to finish filming what I was doing, so this is my finished product. I've got it back on. And uh, from where I left off last time, um, all I had to do was clean out my filter, or my um, pan, and clean it out, clean the magnet, and then I switched out my filter here. This is the old one. That was easy. You just use this tool to twist the old one out and put the new one back in up to 125 inch pounds and then when installing this other filter there is a little seal on it this little guy here and he normally comes off I can't get that off but with the new one you have to take this off and seat it into the hole that it goes into before you install that filter otherwise it will cause damage and I used a long uh, flathead screw, screwdriver and a hammer and lightly tapped it so it was seated against the hole and then I mounted that filter and installed the screw then I had to apply this wonderful stuff um, ultra black RTV I've heard you can also use just a regular gasket maker, but everywhere else that I read about and AutoZone, they all told me this is the stuff that you use. So that was probably the worst part is putting a line of that around the the pan, because if you mess up on that, then you're going to get a transmission leak, and you'll have to do the transmission fluid change all over again. You can kind of see the gunk. The RTVs is uh, sticking out a little bit. What you do is you very carefully lift the pan up onto the transmission, 
being careful to not let the edges touch the inside of the transmission like the filter that's sticking out so you don't get any of the gunk inside and then you install all 15 of your screws you just hand tighten them so they're not super tight so the gunk just comes out a little bit and then wait for at least 30 minutes I'm in the cold so I'm waiting longer and then you're supposed to give it another half turn some things say just tighten it all the way really carefully at first I'm not totally positive but this is how I'm doing it to get a good fit hopefully it works and then with just a regular change and no overhaul you gotta put in the ATF4 if your car previous had ATF3 then ATF4 will work as well pour that in 5 quarts if you didn't do an overhaul if you did just what I did and see if there's any leaks if there are then you get to take the gasket off I'll drop the pan and do it all over again refill it so hopefully this works uh, comment if you have any questions like it if this helped you good luck